Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode of Pen Test One Challenge. We have gained access to an internal web application and we enumerated it. We found um, some interesting features like the logging and uh, the profile page. And so today it's all about doing some code review in order to find the entry point. It's going to be fun, so let's get started. All right, let's dig into those files that we've had access to in the previous video. So the first one was um, logging.php. So why not just uh, start from there? Master logging system author is this one. So that's, uh, that's one email we could uh, use to authenticate with maybe. And then the page includes the init.php and then if the user is LG, I suspect this means is logged in. Yeah, it says here, already logged in, redirect to the main page. And here it's doing a bunch of uh, conditional statements. If we have post data, I wonder what this token is. Oh, we have a get forget parameter. And if it's set, then it's trying to take the email from the post and validate that this email has a valid format. And then it's taking that email and trying to fetch it from the database if it doesn't exist. Then it says we don't have an email here. So this is clearly a email uh, enumeration possibility. And then if there is no error, only then will the application generate a key which seems to be pseudo random and then apply and then hashed and then we query the database well to update the user that has the uh, id the user id which corresponds to the user that has been fetched from our email okay so this is a typical forget password feature and it's generating a URL that points to login.php with a get parameter called key which is nothing but the one that we've just generated and then the uh, user ID okay and then it's writing that r email and then sending it using send mail so we have a bunch of observations here. The first one is the possibility to enumerate emails. And the second one is that there's a send mail that uses email variable. So this variable here is nothing but our post email. So we have maybe a potential SMTP injection at this uh, level here. But I suspect that because we have here a validation uh, we need to read more about this function to see if we can inject other values. And so we could, we could like enumerate the email. And once we find a valid one, we can send a reset password request where we could inject our own email and maybe get the uh, key and the user ID in this URL and reset the user's password. You see where, where this is going. Until now, it's only just speculation. So let's continue reading and see if we find anything else. So uh, if there is no email parameter, uh, forget parameter, we verify also if we have a key. Okay, so I, I think that this is the portion that actually resets the user password. And actually we can see that because we have here two queries, update set password where the user ID equals with the uh, post data of the password parameter. That's the new password. And if we don't have no get uh, parameters called uh, forget or key, um, we just auth try to authenticate the user here using the um, name and password parameters, post data, and then we try to select user ID from users where username equals and password equals. 
I need to also read more about this get row function. I already see that there are some placeholders here, so this means that um, they are using potentially prepared statements, which are, which is immune against uh, SQL injection. But hey, it doesn't uh, hurt to read what this function is. Sounds interesting. Let's go to the uh, is valid mail and see if we can inject anything interesting. It's in options and options is defined somewhere. I guess it's defined inside the init.php. Okay, let's go to ink init.php and let's uh, look for options. Okay, it seems that it might be in lib options. Yeah, it's defining a new class, which I suspect is under lib options class.php. Let's go to that. We're like bloodhounds trying to sniff out any indications of any vulnerability. So let's go to options and we want to learn more about this function is valid mail. So it says here true if it's valid, it checks the email parameter. So it's using the filter var PHP function uh, using the filter validate email. Um, so if you Google that, you'll learn more about this function, but essentially it validates if the email is in line with the RFC specification of an email. So I guess this line here would prevent us from sending uh, multiple emails in the same parameter, but uh, it doesn't hurt to try, right? So let's, uh, let's try if we go to logging, remember, we need to put a forget get parameter and we land on recover. Okay. All right. I'm going to send a test email like this. Try to recover. It says here straight away that this email address doesn't exist in our database. Uh, we've had a email in the source code. That's the uh, email of the developer, I guess. So if you go to index, yeah, that's the email. You know what? I'm going to activate burp just to see how the request looks like. And you can use burp uh, suits community edition in this challenge. It doesn't matter. So if I resend, um, if I send this request, as you can see, we have our forget post data, the forget uh, get parameter, and then our email. And then we notice that there's a token that uh, gets uh, sent every time. And if we look for the token in the response, as you can see, it's re being returned in uh, the form and this is a new value. So if we uh, send this to the repeater, send, render, we get a strange response like saying invalid request. And that's, I guess, because uh, we need to update the token every time. So let's take this new value, put it right here, and then send. And then if we render, we get this email address doesn't exist in our database. So this token essentially works as an anti CSERF token. It will certainly hinder our testing. So we will see if we need to bypass it or not. But for now, we understand that this email doesn't exist. So we need to come up with uh, a valid email. You remember the first part of the attack could be uh, like trying to find any valid emails, but I remember having seen an email, I guess it was uh, this one, contact. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, that's sec.9 for gamini at gmail.com. Okay, let's uh, try to recover it. Oh, it says invalid request. Yeah, because we needed a new token. Oh, we don't have the error, uh, doesn't exist, cool. Do we have uh, any different response here? We don't have any error, which means that this email might be valid. Okay, 
All right, so can we like exfiltrate or steal the reset token? Let's try sending comma and then the hackerish at something. Recover. Oh, okay. So we hit the uh, email filter and here it says email address is not valid. Okay, so let's recap. We can enumerate emails. We found that this email is valid and uh, we need to find a way to bypass the authentication. What about the profile page? So here, the same thing. We include the same initialization file and then we perform a SQL query to fetch the user based on the ID. It expects a parameter called you. All right, and if the user doesn't exist, then it says user doesn't exist or it was deleted. Oh yeah, okay. So that's why we got the this error here. Uh, what was, it was profile. Yeah, we got user doesn't exist or it was deleted. Okay, I see you now. If I say, okay, give me the one with ID maybe zero. Okay, it's redirecting me to HTTPS. Okay, zero doesn't work. What about one? Uh, why does it redirect always to HTTPS? Ooh, one returns something. Profile of admin, rank administrator five years ago, and Gemini is admin. Okay, can we enumerate anything else? Well, I think that's a good idea to use now the intruder. Mm, let me see here. So that's our request with the ID. It doesn't require any token, so that's great. We can automate it just like that. We'll right click, send it to the intruder. We will target the ID here. And we don't want this one, so we will remove those placeholders. And we will use the attack sniper, go to payloads, and uh, we want to use numbers. So click on that and select numbers. We want to go all the way up to 100, I guess, uh, is a reasonable number. And the step would be one. And then we don't want any fractions, so that would be zero, zero. You're in code, we don't bother doing that. And let's uh, hope that we get something. Start the attack. All right, it's finished. And it seems that we have two different lengths. So we have this length and this length. What about other responses? So I'm sorting by length. And here I can see that I have the same requests same output because I have the same length. So if I go to response and render one of them, it says here, yeah, user doesn't exist or was deleted. All right, if we flip over the sort parameter, we get the, the other two, which contain nothing but the administrator user. Okay, so it seems that we have only one user. And so because we already know that there is a valid email, there is a high chance, pretty much 100%, that this user is actually the one that has that email. And so we know that this user has the ID of one and email of Gemini sec something. All right, if we go back to the profile and let's see, read on a little bit. So here it's doing a bunch of verifications on the user's privileges, okay. Here it's uh, taking the avatar, so that's this, this uh, image right here. And then it's taking the user and running the function show name on the user ID. And then it's printing the username between parentheses. So we can safely assume that this is the correct um, username. So if we go back to the logging, we 
are pretty much 100% sure that we need to use admin as the username because that's the one that is being used in the login page. So if we go back real quick to the login page, remember the part that authenticates the user based on the name and password parameters, it's taking that name and put it in, putting it in the username field. So we are filtering based on that. So we can safely assume that we need to use the admin for the username. But what about the password? I'm really terrible at guessing passwords. So let's try admin, admin. Nope. What about admin 12345? Nope. Admin password. Nope. I might try to brute force that using burp. So if you go to proxy, I'm out of options, really. Oh, bummer. I need also to provide the token. Let's try to verify if uh, we could bypass that. So the name would be admin and the password. Let's try administrator this time. Oop, administrator. Administrator and the token and send it. Render. Oh, bummer. We have invalid request. Can I just verify that? Uh, it's working as we expected. If we grab the new value and send it and render the page, username or passwords are wrong. So it, does, it wouldn't work if we wanted to automate that uh, brute force attempt. And we can certainly um, write a small script to fetch the page, fetch the new token, and then insert it into that, and then send the request and iterate through a word list uh, but hey, we have burp and uh, we don't need to use any other tool. It's already built in. So in the next video, we're going to attempt to brute force the credentials and see if um, we find a weak password that we could use. So we're going to automate the attack using burp and only burp. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.